Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Fung. Today what we're going to talk about is what happens to our body during fasting and how this can help you lose weight and feel better at the same time. And stick around to the end when I'm going to share Brittany's story and her fasting regimen which allowed her to lose over 50 pounds in less than a year as well as her top tip. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe for more and like this video. During fasting, our body transitions what we use in terms of fuel from food to what we store on our bodies. So when we talk about energy, the body can really use one of two main fuels. That is glucose, which is a type of carbohydrate, and fat. Protein is also one of the macronutrients, but is not primarily used as a fuel. It can be in a pinch, but mostly it's used for structure, that is it's for building functional tissues like muscles and bones and so on. When we store energy or store calories, we also store it in two different ways, which is glucose and fat. So we store glucose in our liver in the form of glycogen. The body takes the individual molecules of glucose, strings them all together in a long chain, and puts it into the liver and that's called glycogen. If we have more storage that we need, then we use body fat. When we're eating, our body, like the liver and the heart and the kidney and so on, will use the glucose which is from the food that we eat. But if we're not eating, we still need a source of energy. And this is going to be drawn from our body's stores. The main toggle switch here is insulin. When insulin is high, we're going to use primarily the source of our, from our food. When insulin is low, that's a signal to start drawing out some of the calories from our body's own stores. And remember, this is an entirely normal process and happens every day. When you eat, you're storing calories. When you're not eating, such as when you're sleeping, you're going to use up some of the calories you've stored away. And that's the reason you don't die in your sleep every single night. When you extend that fasting period, you simply are using the body's own stores for longer and longer periods of time. So let's see what happens when you start to go longer. So this graph describes what happens to our body as we start going longer out through the fasting period. So you can see that initially for the first few hours, about four hours after we eat, we're still using the energy derived from our food. After that period of time, we start to use some of the energy we've stored away. So the first thing we're going to use is the glycogen in the liver. So the glycogen is broken back down into little molecules of glucose sent back into the blood and that's the source of energy for most of the body. That is your muscles, your heart, your kidneys, uh, your bones, all of that sort of thing. And the glycogen in our liver, if it's full, is going to last about 24 hours. If you eat a very low carbohydrate diet, for example, and you haven't been able to store away the glucose, then you may not have much of that stores and then you may rely on other sources of energy. So when the glycogen starts to run out, there's a period that you can see in the graph that the, as glycogen goes down, you increase this other process called gluconeogenesis. And that's a period of time, somewhere between 16 and perhaps 28 to 30 hours, where your body is going to start using some protein in order to generate the glucose that you need for energy. After that, the fat burning starts to ramp up and then you'll start to use your body fat for energy and the amount of energy you're going to derive from the protein goes down. But wait, this period of protein degradation, gluconeogenesis, isn't that a bad thing? It sounds like a bad thing to be using up your protein. But as we're going to see, it's not as bad as you think. First, if you're overweight, most people actually have an excess of protein. And protein is not the same as muscle. There's a lot of skin and connective tissue and other proteins that can be used without losing strength. During fasting, the hormone insulin goes down, but certain other hormones go up. 
and these are called the counter-regulatory hormones. And this is several hormones, but one of the most important ones is growth hormone. So when you're not eating, the amount of growth hormone that goes into your body actually surges. So after 24 hours of fasting, uh, you're seeing about three, four times the amount of growth hormone that you normally do. Even up to five days of fasting, the amount of growth hormone keeps going up and up and up. And it's this growth hormone that is going to help you rebuild those necessary proteins when you start to eat again. Another hormone that goes up is epinephrine, or also called adrenaline. So when you don't eat, your body is not actually shutting itself down. It's actually increasing the amount of adrenaline that's going through your system. And that's going to give you more energy. The third thing that you're going to see is increase in the sympathetic nervous system. And this is mediated through the vagus nerve through your spine. And the sympathetic nervous system is also called the fight or flight response. So that when you face a danger, for example, if you see a lion, all of a sudden your sympathetic nervous system goes up, your heart rate pounds faster, you start to push out glucose into the system so that you have energy to either fight or run away very fast. But it's yet another way that fasting actually tends to increase the activation of your body, it energizes you, it doesn't knock you down. Well, what about your electrolytes? Some people are worried that if they don't eat for a period of time, that their sodium or their potassium or their chloride, for example, will go too low. But that's not actually what happens. This is a graph of what happened during the world record-breaking fast, which was 382 days. And you can see that while the numbers bounce around a little bit, they tend to stay very stable. So not just sodium and potassium and chloride, but also calcium and phosphorus, and also things like urea and creatinine, which are measures of the kidney function. So the body is able to fuel itself on the body fat without really any detrimental effects to the electrolytes in your system. So in summary, fasting is really this transition between how you use your fuel. Are you using it from the food or are you using it from the food that you ate in the past, which you've now stored away in the form of body fat or in the form of glycogen? So if your blood sugars are too high, for example, increasing your fasting uh, time is going to allow your body to use up some of that fuel, that extra sugar. If you want to lose weight, that is body fat, then you're giving your body the time it needs to transition into burning off this body fat, which remember is just a store of calories. Body fat is not there for looks. It's there for you to use when you have nothing to eat. So you have to give it time. But along the way, during this uh, transition, what happens to the body, there are a lot of other things that are very good. Growth hormone is gonna go up, so you're gonna preserve your lean tissue. You're gonna feel more energy. You're gonna feel better concentration, higher mental abilities, all while losing weight, maybe taking care of your blood sugars. What's not to love about that? So meet Brittany. She's a nurse and she had been overweight most of her life. When her son turned one, she decided, well, she needed to get a little healthier. So she researched intermittent fasting, and by using fasting, she was able to lose over 50 pounds. But more than that, her blood pressure went back to normal and her cholesterol numbers got better. So she was much healthier, which she needed to do. But on top of that, she felt she had so much more energy that she was actually able to keep up with her children now. Brittany used an 18 to 20 hour fast on most days of the week. She does shorter fasts, but more frequently, and found that her weight was making steady improvement, so she's just stuck to it. As she started to lose weight and got more energy, she started adding in some more exercise, because now it was a lot easier for her. She had the energy to go out and walk, and sometimes run for two to three miles. Brittany's top tip for fasting is don't quit. So it's really hard for her to get used to the fasting because she wasn't used to it. She was eat, used to eating much more frequently during the day. So not only was it difficult, but she wasn't seeing a lot of results at the beginning either. But she trusted in the process 
And after about a month and a half or so, she started noticing that the weight was coming off and her waist size was coming down, her pants were fitting better. So just remember, if you don't see the results that you're hoping for, sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Just keep going. If it works, continue. If it doesn't work, you can adjust it. That's it, everybody. I'll see you next week.